Alright, before we begin, I'd like to go over the history of the B-Bender, which is actually pretty interesting. Uh, the B-Bender was invented in 1968 by musicians Gene Parsons and Clarence White of the band Birds. The device was originally called the Parsons White Pulse String, later renamed the String Bender, which is much better, and is now best known as the B-Bender, even better. Early prototypes developed by Parsons included multiple mechanisms for multiple strings, but guitarist White decided he preferred a single B-string bender in the final design. The B-string is bent up a whole step, or more in some cases, when the guitarist pulls the guitar downward. This applies pressure from the guitarist's shoulder to the strap, which in turn smooths the top strap button and triggers a mechanism which is connected to the B-string in the bottom of the bridge. Uh, the one you'll see in some of these photos, you'll see it's routed out, and there's a pretty complex looking mechanism that's set inside most of the guitar. So most of the Telecaster looks like it's been hollowed out here. Uh, it's pretty interesting. In 1973, uh, Parsons started making and installing the device himself and renamed it the String Bender. He eventually made as many as 2,000 custom installations for guitarists including Ronnie Wood of the Rolling Stones. Um, Harold Matlin of Matlin Guitars built one for Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. And let's not forget that John Bland of the Eagles played one in Peaceful Easy Feeling. So you'll hear that that's not actually a pedal steel guitar, which I never knew. Pretty cool. So Fender was approached during this period, you know, to produce this, and a prototype was developed uh, and, and actually modified uh, to suit mass production. But it ended up not going into production, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I guess I'll have to research that a little bit more. White and Parsons approached Fender again in the 90s, and this resulted in the Fender Custom Shop producing a Clarence White Signature Model Custom Tele equipped with the String Bender. Around 200 were produced, and based on the success, Fender decided to mass produce a similar model and call it the B Bender. Uh, Parsons revised the design again, and in 1996, Fender began production of the Nashville B-Bender Telecaster, incorporating the Parsons String Bender. So the device you'll see in this video is called a Hip Shot B-Bender, and it does not contain the original mechanism discussed above. Instead, you'll see a simplified mechanism, and it's installed on top of the guitar. The B string gets pulled when the guitarist moves their hip against a central pin at the bottom of the guitar, which will be de demonstrated. Alright, good day. So, I bought this on a whim because I've got a special project in mind. It's a blue Telecaster. But, it's a glary instrument. Now, if you ever heard about glary instruments, they're, I think they're the cheapest guitar I possibly could find. It was about $89 total, and this is what you get. So you can see how high the strings are. That's a good angle right there. So not very comfortable to play. The bridge is maxed out. And the bridge pickup is about as high as it can possibly go. So right now it's very hard to play. It's got some cheap strings on it. Oh no, and I can hold it in one hand. It is the lightest guitar that uh, I've ever seen. The reason I'm showing this to you is not to do another glary review. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the most affordable B bender that has ever graced the earth. All right, I just wanted to show you what uh, pops up if we look at uh, B Bender for sale. So you'll see a few tellies appear, you'll see uh, something, but really not a lot. Um, and if you look on Reverb or eBay for a B Bender, right, this is what one looks like, they go for about two grand, uh, 2,500. That's kind of the, the price. Um, and these are the Nashville B-Bender Telecasters that I mentioned in my short history of the B-Bender. So, pretty pricey. There's no budget B-Bender out there that I've seen. Um, that's really the going price for a B-Bender. So I've lowered the bridge to get the strings down and
there's a little bit of buzz, so I think it needs a truss rod adjustment, but the frets are the the coarsest frets that I've ever come across. I mean, they are grainy. So yeah, I've seen other content creators get these, and uh, they, they kind of rave about them. I'm just a uh, nobody, so this is, this will show you what you would get. Let's see if we can get this truss rod where it needs to be, and then we'll proceed. Alright, so, can I get in here? That's ridiculous. Alright, so one thing I like to do when I get a new guitar is do the credit card trick. Basically, I've cut this to have three sides, a very short side here, uh, a long side, and a medium side. So you start with the long side, go across three of the frets, you check to see if the card wobbles. It's currently wobbling. So that means we have a high fret there on the second wire. And again, these are not polished frets. These are the coarsest frets I've ever seen. Alright, so what I've got to do now is go in and I'll polish the frets with steel wool and I'll take down the high ones with some sandpaper and a file. See if we can't get it up to par for our B-Bender project. Still got a little sawdust and goop of some sort from the factory on the bridge. Now if you've ever done fret work before, it's not fun. Really, you should put tape um, all across the actual, you know, where, you're, where the wood is. Um, which I might have to do that actually. I'm gonna go ahead and tape her up. All right, the entire uh, neck is taped up with masking tape. I won't tell you how long that took. And I've got many dogs here, many dogs. Keep me company. So all is good. JHS pedal shows on the background. Let's get to using some steel wool and some sandpaper and a file to get these frets level. All right. Well, you can see how much fun that was. Steel wool, sandpaper, filing. Very tedious, methodical work. But I think we have it good enough to string it up and see how it plays. This string tree isn't necessary really. It actually pulls it to the side a little bit. I just don't see why that string tree is necessary, so. Hey, little buddy. Look at those tellies. So I got it to a point where it plays okay. All right, let's make this thing a bender. So the bender I have is really simple. It only has this B bender here. So it looks like three screws go in. It's easy to align because of the strap button. Of course, with this being a glary, I'm not so sure that the strap button's dead center. So we'll have to take a look at that. Let's come with nice instructions though. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is take off the strap button here. The guitar was $89 and the speed bender was like 180 so doesn't make a whole lot of sense but we give it a shot anyway and hey if I like it a lot I'll put it on a nicer guitar in the future. What I'm going to do is take the strap button here and put the lock washer on the screw along with the strap button. I had to tear a little bit in the felt here. I'm just going to put that screw through and then put this rubber washer on that was already on there.
it only it didn't come with any other screws like there are two screw holes on the bottom and I can see one right there and there's another one it did not come with two screws so I'm just gonna use the one I have and look for another one that might fit all right I found two screws of a similar length so I'm gonna go ahead and put those in those holes tighten it up It's starting to get exciting. All we need to do now is center this. So I had to stare at this for a while and see where did where does the string go? Well the string goes here through underneath and I think it's supposed to tuck under the spring a little bit. But you can see mine's kind of going at an angle. That's not what we want. We want it to come toward us a little bit so I'm gonna do that now okay I'm, I'm winded that was some brute force shit man so now I got to get this little Teflon tube in here so that it doesn't uh, break all right so I actually um, did not drill the hole at first um, and it played fine it just started squeaking this morning when I was trying to practice and there goes the pin but uh, overall this thing sounds really good and the glary surprisingly holds tune incredibly I mean it, it, it doesn't go out of tune with this B-bender, which uh, is nuts. But anyway, the hole is slightly oversized, meaning I could move this back and forth, which is not ideal, but it will stay in place um, for B-bending. The tension of the string upward kind of keeps it in place. So uh, we're, we're done. Uh, let's see if I can, as a, as a beginner to this, make something sound good for the demo. All right, the new B-Bender guitar from Glary Instruments. All right, so this thing sounds pretty good, uh, especially with a univibe on it. I just thought, why not throw on a univibe and see how it sounds? So this is how it sounds. <laughs> does it for this one. Um, there's a whole world of B-Bender licks and playing styles and this just opens it up. And for a guitar setup that's under $300, to have this is pretty cool to mess around with. So go get you a cheap ass glary instrument. If you know how to do setup work, get it set up. It might not need to be set up, uh, but mine certainly did. Uh, it needed a fret level. Uh, it needed uh, truss rod adjustment and bridge adjustment um, but after all that was done this B-Bender installed beautifully